Wednesday Wanderers, it's Ranger Erin again, and we are talking today about silk. What is silk? So you may have heard that word silk before, talking about clothes. So some of our clothes are made out of this fabric, uh, this fiber that is called silk. And silk, unlike most of our clothes, so most of our clothes are going to be cotton and they're going to be kind of uh, soft, but they're not going to be very shiny. But silk is going to be really shiny and very smooth. And when you change it in the light, it's going to shine in different ways. So silk is going to come from our spider friends. So all of our spiders out here are going to be making silk for their webbing. They're going to put their eggs and wrap them up in a silk wrapper to keep their eggs safe. We also have moths are our friends out here who are going to be making lots and lots of silk. So when they're ready to go through metamorphosis, they're going to make a cocoon all out of that silk. And even some of our butterflies are going to make a little silk button and some other insects can make some silk, but mostly it's going to be those spiders and those moths are going to be making our silk. So silk is some really cool stuff. So I already mentioned that it's very shiny. So if you were to look at silk, under a magnifying glass. So looking really, really closely at these very tiny threads of silk, they would be shaped like a triangle. And when they're, that shape is gonna allow them to play with the light. So that's why when you walk up to a spider web, sometimes it disappears. If you look at it from different angles, the way that that light hits it might make it shiny and make it appear to you, or it might make it kind of disappear to you. So you may not see it at all times. So silk has that kind of special playful quality with light. It's also going to be made out of protein. So even though that silk is super, super thin, it's strong for how small it is. So it's a very strong fiber, one of our strongest fibers that we have out here. I already said that those moths and those spiders are going to be our two most important silk makers, especially around here in Kentucky. So the way that those um, two animals are going to be making their silk is that it's going to be a liquid. So they're going to produce this liquid inside of their body and then as soon as it comes out and it touches the air, it's going to turn into a solid. So it's kind of magical the way that as soon as it touches that air, it becomes completely solid and strong silk as we know it. For those spiders, they're going to be making it out of their abdomen, so their backside. So kind of wherever they're walking, if they're a web-making spider, they're always leaving a little trail of webbing behind them so that they can always secure themselves. So in case they get kind of knocked off of a tree, they've got that webbing that they can grab onto and climb back up. So if you ever see a spider walking around, you can kind of touch that area just behind them on the ground, and you might notice that there's a little trail of webbing coming out from behind them. For our caterpillars, for our moth caterpillars and our butterfly caterpillars, it's going to come out of their mouth area. And when it's time for them to make that cocoon, those butterflies are going to make a little silk button and it's going to, they're going to wave their head back and forth to sort of weave that button and then those moths are going to weave it all around their body. So they're going to use their mouth to make that cocoon all around their body. For your first activity, I want you to talk to your family and see if anybody owns any silk fabric. So you're gonna ask them to just borrow it, just to feel it, just to know what that silk fabric feels like. So once you borrow it, you're gonna be very gentle with it. Uh, and you're just gonna notice how it plays with the light. Remember that shape gives it that shiny appearance. Notice, does it feel sticky? Like we think of spider webs being sticky. Does it feel smooth? Just sort of feel it a little bit. Uh, you might be able to tug out and we're not gonna try and tear it, but notice how strong it is as well. We're gonna go on a silk hunt for our hike. So we're gonna keep our eyes peeled for our two most common silk producers. We're gonna be looking out for some spiders and we're gonna be looking out for some moths. So you might see some tent caterpillars up in the trees, lots and lots of silk making a sort of a home for them. You might see some cocoons that are wrapped full of that silk, or you might see some spider webs. When you find that spider web, and I've got one right here with a spider right in the center, you're gonna take a look at it from different viewpoints. And you're gonna notice, does that spider web disappear when you change where you're standing? How does it play with the light? And then you're also gonna touch very gently one strand and see 
how strong it is. We're not trying to break it, but silk is known to be very strong for how small it is. And then maybe, also, does it feel sticky? Does it feel like that silk that we have at home? Here we have our tent caterpillars home. And they use silk even before they start to go through metamorphosis. And they make a home with lots and lots of others just like them that is full of that silk. So this whole structure is made out of crisscrossing silk. It's not sticky, at least not more than most other silk. And they live in there, but when it's time for them to go through metamorphosis, they will leave and they'll go and they'll make their cocoon again out of that silk on some other part of the tree. So they'll move away from this sort of communal home that is full of all of these other moths. If you find a moth cocoon on your hike, we're just going to look at them because inside their cocoon, they're pretty defenseless. So we don't want to accidentally mess up their cocoon. But you can look really closely and see all the threads that are holding them in place and how the whole cocoon is woven out of that silk thread. And just like the other examples, it's strong and it might be shiny and in some places might appear or disappear when you look at it from different lights. Well, thanks for joining me this week. If you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to me. Uh, if you found something weird on your hike, you just don't know what it is, you can send me a picture. I'll try and help out and I will catch you all next time.